Welcome to the overview of our series, Myers-Briggs for Midlife Career Changers. I'm David, the producer of the series. Now we're going to be taking a close look at each of the 16 Myers-Briggs types and how they relate to midlife career changes. Our expert is Edith Richards, Myers-Briggs Master Practitioner and founder of A Top Career. Edith specialises in helping adults in career transition navigate through a career change and find a meaningful career path. Edith, thanks for taking the time to create this series and help what I'm sure must be thousands of adults who are considering a career change. Thanks, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you tell us a little about your experience using the Myers-Briggs? I've been using the Myers-Briggs as a career counselor for about 15 years, and I'm excited to share this audio format with an audience of potential career changers. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are going to benefit from your expertise. Edith's website can be found at www.atopcareer.com. She loves feedback, so feel welcome to visit and say hello. Now, this series focuses on career changing from a Myers-Briggs perspective. Edith, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Absolutely. So first, a brief history. The Myers-Briggs assessment was created by Catherine Briggs and her daughter, Isabel Briggs Myers, and it was taken from the work of Carl Jung. It was first published in 1942, and it is the world's most utilized personality assessment tool. For information on its reliability and validity, CPP, who are the exclusive publishers, have extensive research on reliability and validity testing, and you can learn more about this at CPP. Now, you say it's a psychometric assessment. Yes. Psychometric career assessments like the Myers-Briggs are usually part of the career counseling process. When they are administered and interpreted correctly by a trained practitioner, they're incredibly empowering and useful to the career development process. Can you explain a few ways in which Myers-Briggs can assist midlife career changers? It can help you in selecting a career field that's a good fit for your personality. It can help you gain a better understanding of your strengths and weaknesses. That's helping you understand the work environments, the tasks, and the people you'd work best with. And finally, it can help you understand how your personality affects your career decisions, your job search strategies, and the way you communicate with others. Would you say certain personality types gravitate towards certain careers? Well, according to type theory, we will find Myers-Briggs types in occupations that are consistent with the characteristics of the work environment of those occupations. The Center for Applications of Psychological Type, or CAPT, has a great deal of data on personality types within the many occupational categories. And you can find out more about this at CAPT.org. What does this mean for adults in or considering a career transition? So ultimately, dissatisfaction in a career is driven by some kind of unmet aspirations, and these are often felt very painfully in midlife. That does make sense. Adults who change career paths have a lot more at stake. Absolutely. Rather than a young person just getting into a career, an adult changing careers is going to have a number of factors to consider before making that leap. And these would include financial and family commitments, returning to school or not, different skill sets, learning new skill sets, and potential changes in salary and benefits and work hours. I imagine people's motivation is going to be different as they get older too. Yes, it is important to consider the motivation for a career change. For example, if you're a voluntary career changer, as opposed to someone who's been laid off or whose field is becoming scarce, you're likely going to be more open to taking risks. If you didn't climb the career ladder as quickly as you'd have liked, or if you find that a high income isn't as satisfying as the work you do, all of these can affect job satisfaction. So knowing your Myers-Briggs type increases your success in career choices, you learn to know yourself better and gain more confidence from this. Yes, people will contribute more when they're doing what they love to do and doing what they're great at. I like that. We hear a lot about people being successful at what they do. If you could break it down, What qualities help people be most successful in their careers? That's a great question. In my opinion, the most successful people are known authentically for who they are. They know themselves and they can articulate it and they connect well and build relationships with others and they make the time to do this. Can the Myers-Briggs help career changers approach situations in a more positive way? 
the purpose of the Myers-Briggs is to provide insight and awareness into yourself. In this case, yourself as a career changer and others, for example, others who can help you move your career forward. This insight enables a deeper understanding and helps provide a foundation for better communication and human interaction. Now, from what I understand, the Myers-Briggs measures natural preferences. Yes, the Myers-Briggs looks at your natural preferences. Where do you direct your energy? How do you take in information? How do you make decisions? And how do you orient yourself with the external world? Knowing your Myers-Briggs type can help you decide which career paths come easier for you based on your natural preferences. And ultimately, the Myers-Briggs can help you decide what career choice is most in line with your natural preferences. An administrator who understands the assessment can help you understand what these preferences mean to your unique situation and apply it to an overall strategy for success. This is, is going to be fascinating. Is there anything else people should know before they listen to this audio series? I do need to mention some potentially misunderstood information about the Myers-Briggs. One, the Myers-Briggs should not be the sole measure of a career decision. Your personality is a complex mix of many factors, and no assessment can give you a complete picture. Okay. Secondly, there's a lot of variation within type. So just because your Myers-Briggs profile recommends certain careers, that doesn't mean that you won't be successful in something completely different. Okay. And finally, I do need to emphasize that the Myers-Briggs doesn't measure skills or job performance. It's not going to tell you whether you're suited for a particular job or whether you'll be a star performer. It wasn't designed to be part of the recruitment process, and therefore it shouldn't be used to screen or categorize employees or potential hires. Thanks, Edith. Now, before we sign off, can you provide a little information about the format of the show? We'll be recording 16 sessions, one for each of the 16 types. I'll provide an overview of the type, explanations of the cognitive functions, strengths, and areas for development, what each type needs in a career in order for it to be satisfying, and some possible career paths for that type. That's excellent. Okay. I'm looking forward to learning more about how each of the 16 types approach a career change. Great. Thanks for this overview. Again, Edith's website is www.atopcareer.com. MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.